This piece is called Humanifestation. It is my contention that our current definition of compounding interest lacks a fundamental understanding of mathematics. The most common environment ripe with misusage of these percentiles is the banking industry. <laughs> Through the vested power of some ancient allocation, they create money to loan out of thin air. From zero, they create ones, twos, and trillions of other ways to quantify something that, at its essence, is really nothing. For the money changers, this throws a wrench into the otherwise convenient equation of zero times infinity equals rich. For even as the exponents spread out and multiply, yeah. they forget that at the source, it's multiplied by zero. Mm -hmm. So usury interest climbs into the sky on house mortgages, credit cards, and student loans. All the while, they take your one and attempt to balance out their zero. But anything times zero is still zero, and this is why the term compounding interest is only accurate for those in charge of the equation, the concealers of the zero. For the rest of us, it really means energy servitude to privately issued, federally reserved, but not governed, bills of currency, while our true standards of wealth, like peace of mind, wellness, love, and access to shelter and provision for self and family, all take a back seat, as we are forced to help them balance this hapless equation. Yeah, yeah. But in all things, there is a grain of truth, and it is upon this idea of compounding interest that I wish to extrapolate more powerfully and accurately to bring our humanifestation into clearer focus. Problems expressed with solutions in absentia will always remain problems. The absurdity in the equation of usury is in the hidden zero. It's the nothing that was called something to make the equation work, balanced or no. So how to change that variable of zero so we have a true intellectual statement? We need a one. It's a good thing that we all are, as sentient beings, a significant one. It only takes a real one in the place of the imposter zero, and the equation blossoms. So how would this shifted equation work in the breathing world? Here's my take on the true potential of compounding interest. When I use my energy to help you manifest your goals or bring about your bliss, then that lifts up my energy as well. By helping another being achieve their purpose in this human body, I also help myself and bring energy and empowerment into my own bliss. That is my interest compounding as your interest compounds. And in this way, we keep growing, inspiring, and facilitating each other's fulfillment and wellness. And the pool of energy and creation becomes continually more abundant. Mm -hmm. By helping others realize their dreams, we draw closer to our own dreams, Hugh manifesting their truth. Permaculture is an example of this. Instead of conventional extract, then consume, then resupply systems of energy, permaculture factors all facets of the equation. David Bloom says, there's no such thing as waste to a permaculturist, only surplus. One process becomes the fuel for another process, becomes the fuel for another process. It's a beautiful cycle that compounds for you, me, and the spaceship Earth we're all riding on at 40,000 plus miles per hour through space. A quadrant of Seattle is utilizing one of its parks to plot and grow a huge community garden based on permacultural approaches. How much more rich does that make the community as a whole? Not to mention snipping those long strings of supply lines that puppet us all over the globe. So instead of depleting one account of energy so another can swell, both are rewarded for their mutual interests. True compounding interest is only found in banks of the river of spirit. It's right here and right now, available to us in infinite supply, activated simply by attention and action. So what's your fulfillment, and how can we start achieving that today? I'm here to help. It's in our interest. And it's the only way we're ever going to make any real sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs>